and welcome to another Motion Mile After Effects tutorial. It's Mackenzie Chriswell here, uh, and we've got another great new design to take a look at, uh, so let's, let's do it. All right, uh, jumping uh, right into this one, uh, we're going to need a new composition, uh, as usual. Uh, or actually, in this case, we're going to need a couple of uh, new compositions. And uh, let's see, so I'll rename this, f I'll name this first one, uh, we'll name it uh, Render Comp. And uh, we'll make it about 10 seconds long or so. Uh, and we're going to be using 720p. All right, looks nice. Yeah, we'll actually do a 1080p. Sorry about that. Uh, so we'll make that comp, uh, and then we'll uh, make another another new composition, and we'll make this one uh, three seconds long. Or uh, yeah, uh, and we'll call this one uh, title one. And we need another new comp. So composition, new composition. Uh, call this one title two and three seconds long again uh, and then one more new composition uh, command in command in uh, and we'll call this title three and we'll make this one four seconds long uh, and then if we come back into this render composition uh, just really quickly uh, we'll drag in the title one comp and the title three comp Put that at the end, and then we'll put the title two right in the middle. Might be a little hard to get it exact, but we can come in here and line up the uh, keyframes. All right, and that's just a little bit of setup uh, to get our design set up. Uh, it's don't worry about it, just do it, uh, and we'll come back to this a little later in the tutorial and uh, do some animation inside of this comp. But for now, uh, what we're going to do is create uh, those nice three individual titles uh, that you saw in the design. We're actually going to create them independently uh, in their own compositions. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and get started with uh, the third title, kind of the final uh, design. So what we'll do is we'll create a new layer or uh, a new solid. Uh, so we'll do layer new solid. And we want kind of a nice uh, color. Uh, let's see. I used a blue in the original. So we'll go for a nice red this time maybe. And uh, we can punch up the color a lot. But for this, kind of, for this design, I think it looks a little better to be kind of a muted uh, color just kind of in the background. Very soft. So we'll go for that kind of a color uh, here are the numbers here if you want to see them 360 68 75 and you can copy that down if you want uh, the exact same uh, color swatch I guess uh, but then we'll just throw that in the background uh, and then we'll need some text here uh, so we'll just click this T up here grab the text button and uh, we'll type out uh, 2d these design in all caps and let's see here, let's come to the character window and uh, turn that down, turn that off. Uh, and we'll scale it down quite a bit. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is the uh, point of control, like kind of the axis point is set in a weird position. Uh, and so what we can do is if we grab this tool up here, it's called the uh, anchor point uh, mover tool or I think it's called the pan behind tool actually. Uh, what we can do is we can move this anchor point uh, more towards the middle of this design. And what that'll do is allow us to uh, uh, go ahead and align this title in the exact middle of uh, the composition. Uh, any of these windows that you don't have uh, showing up over here, uh, there's a number of windows that will show up by default, but if any, if for any reason any of these windows aren't showing up, uh, just come up to window and make sure whatever the uh, window in question is checked. Uh, okay, so we're using the font uh, Proxima Nova. It's part of Typekit, um, but there's a couple of other fonts that you can find. Uh, that'll be pretty close to this and you don't really have to worry about it too much. Uh, let's see, we'll make it bold. 
and I'm having the stroke be the same color on uh, both of these, uh, just a solid white color. Uh, and then, and since this fill and the stroke are both the same color, what we can do is turn up the uh, the stroke over here to make the text a little thicker, and that'll help out with some fonts that uh, don't really want to get very blocky and bulky when you need them to. Uh, so that's that's a cool trick. Uh, and then what we want is to uh, do a little bit of animation here. So what we'll do is we'll hit this triangle here, bring down uh, some animation properties, and if we click animate over here, we'll want to animate the scale and uh, the position. Okay, so we'll bring up both of those properties here, and what we'll do is we'll push the position up quite a bit, or we'll, we'll actually push it up by bringing it down, and we'll set the scale to zero. Keep in mind, uh, be careful about this, you're not changing the actual transform scale and position, you're changing the, uh, the scale and position based on this uh, animator that we just added here. Could be a bit confusing, uh, but just make sure you don't mess that up. Uh, but then anyways, we'll expand this range selector window here. And as we turn up the start percentage, what we'll get is the title animating itself on uh, by kind of dragging down and scaling up. So nice look there. Uh, and we just want to keyframe it. So we'll hit the stopwatch here at the very beginning. Uh, come forward roughly half a second. Uh, we're in 24 frames per second, so right at about 12 will be half a second. So we'll do maybe 13. Uh, and then we'll just bring it up to 100%. If you take a quick look, it'll look pretty nice. Uh, and then un here under advanced, what we'll do is just click randomize order. And what that'll do is just randomize the order that some of these letters show up in. Uh, and there is also a random seed control so you can change what uh, order they show up in. If, you, if it looks a little off to you and you don't like the order that they started to show up in, uh, you can change that with this random seed controller here. Uh, okay, and so that's kind of a nice way to animate on uh, this text. And then what we'll do is we'll turn on motion blur for the comp and motion blur for this text layer. And as these animate on, we'll get a nice little bit of motion blur as you can see here. Okay, looks great. And then what we'll do is we'll make a copy of this layer here. So Command C and Command V or Edit, Copy and Edit, Paste. We'll also do the trick. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll do layer pre-compose and pre-compose this bottom layer here uh, we'll call the shadow and the reason that we need to pre-compose it is because we're going to be stretching it out a little bit with an effect and uh, if we do that and if we try to do that without pre-composing it it will treat it as a text layer and trap uh, the uh, design or you know how we can stretch it within the parameters of the text uh, but when we pre-compose it, we get to stretch it around the entire composition. Uh, basically, when you pre-compose a text layer, it uh, begins to treat the text as if it's an image. Uh, and so that's what we want to happen here. So what we'll do is on this shadow layer, uh, we'll grab a couple of different effects. Uh, the first will be a fill effect. And we'll just go ahead and make it solid black. Take a look there. Awesome. And then what we'll grab is another effect called CC Radial Blur. And we'll turn up the amount initially to about, I guess 30 will look pretty good. And we'll set it to Fading Zoom. And then what we wanna do is we just wanna bring the shadow up by bringing down this Y uh, value here. So we'll set it to about negative 1500. Uh, and then we'll also move it over, move the shadow over a little bit by adjusting the X value here. So we'll set that to about zero. 
and that'll give us kind of a nice drooping shadow. And if we hit T here on this layer, or of course just uh, expand the entire layer, uh, we can turn down the opacity a little bit and just get kind of this nice shadow that will actually, since we pre-composed this layer after we did that animation at the beginning, uh, the shadow will pop up with the text. So you can see, you know, some of the letters are there, some of them aren't, and the shadows are showing up with the letter that is coming on or the number that is coming on. Uh, so nice design there. We'll add a little bit more motion to this scene. Uh, so here on the radial blur, what we'll do is come to the beginning and animate or set a keyframe on the amount here and then maybe bring that up a little bit. And, and uh, what that'll do is over the length of the composition or, or the layer, it will expand the length of the shadow. And then what maybe we can do is come in here, grab the uh, 2D, both of these text layers, the pre-comp and the uh, text layer, and pre-compose those together, call this text, and hit S to adjust the scale, and maybe set it to about 95 at the beginning, and then the full 100% at the end. So some kind of nice motion just to add a little bit uh, of a distraction at the end. I uh, don't really know what it's distracting from. It just it's just a bit of motion. Uh, so that's a pretty so that's a pretty good setup for this uh, third for this final title here. And let's go ahead and set up these first two. Uh, so let's see. We'll again start with a new uh, solid, and we'll just make this a white solid. And let's see. Let's do a new title. What was this one? This one was flat, I believe. So get some nice flat text. And let's see. We want to keep the stroke the same color as the fill. And we'll align that in the center. Let's see here. Let's scale it up quite a bit. Okay, and then something kind of interesting that was in the original copies, you may have seen uh, there was kind of this wire design in the background of this comp uh, and also in the background of the second title. Uh, and the way that we got that is I actually built a little bit of a 3D mesh here. If we open this up, oh, if uh, we go ahead and open up this file here, this is a, um, a uh, QuickTime movie rendered with alpha. And uh, what this is is basically just kind of some 3D mesh rendered in wireframe mode uh, that we're using as kind of an interesting techie background. Uh, and so, th and this is actually pretty easy to set up, uh, but I just went ahead and rendered out a version of it. So uh, this will be available with the uh, tutorial files. Uh, and so you can go ahead and grab this and use it uh, in your project. Uh, so what we'll do with the wireframe design here, oh, we're in a title one, is we'll just kind of toss it into the background. And initially it won't really show up. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll get a fill effect and we'll fill it with a nice black. And then if we hit T again, we can turn down the opacity quite a bit. And this will add a very nice look in the background. And this is a pretty long render. It's about 12 seconds. So we can move it around until we find a spot of the movement that we like a lot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and now what we'll do is we'll take this flat layer and uh, we'll make it 3D. Uh, and then we'll make a copy of it. And if we hit rotate here, we'll rotate on the... Is it, on the x-axis 90 degrees and hit S to bring up scale we'll unlock the scale here and we'll scale it and we'll scale it up on the y-axis until it fills up the rest of the frame and then uh, here for the color what we'll do is we'll just actually grab another fill effect because it'll be easier to change the color 
and we'll offset it a little bit with a much lighter color. And the way to do that might be to actually make it black uh, and then hit T and just lower the opacity until we get to a good point. Uh, that way kind of this wireframe can show up through, uh, I guess, the shadow that uh, this uh, text layer is casting here. Uh, so it looks nice. And we'll just add a new camera here. And we'll come down here and keyframe both the point of interest and the position. Uh, drag those keyframes to the beginning. And then we'll actually grab this camera orbit tool up here and orbit around this way. Come to the very end of the comp and orbit around in the opposite direction. Okay, well, I'm gonna lower the uh, render quality here so that we can work a little faster and that should help out a little bit. Uh, and as you can see, we just got kind of this cool dynamic shots where uh, the shadows here that are the 3D layer is casting actually kind of come in and out of the foreground of the shot and we've got all this nice wireframe going on in the background and the wireframe isn't actually connected to the camera uh, but since this uh, but since this uh, text is moving around in, in kind of an orbital way and the background is as well it makes it kind of feel like it's all in one space so very nice look there uh, but that's our second title uh, or our first title actually, this is the third one. Uh, so now let's go on to the second title. And what we want is we just want to copy this uh, layer over here, this red solid layer that we created. Uh, we're going to be using the exact same color swatch uh, because we want uh, the second and third title to kind of play off of each other a little bit. Uh, so we'll go ahead and paste that in there. Uh, again, you can, of course, use edit, copy, and edit, paste if you don't like the shortcuts, but they're command C, command V. They're super easy to remember. Uh, and then what we'll do, we'll create a little bit of text here, and we'll call this clean. And so we'll do C-L-E-A. And if we grab these bottom two letters, uh, and we'll actually scale it down, and uh, we'll scale it down quite a bit, looks like a good size. And if we grab these bottom two layers here and move uh, the baseline shift, we can get these a little closer to each other. Let's see, we'll align on the Y axis and then just make a copy. Let's see, and then we'll hit in. We'll make this letter in and scale this up quite a bit. Let's see a line in the middle again. Make it just a little bigger. A line. Okay, so that'll look good. And then if we hit P, we'll just drag this over. Uh, and then if we again do the layer precompose pre-compose this new text layer, so we'll call this text to a layer. We're going to pre-compose all of this t text together, and then what we'll do is we'll draw a mask just around the actual title, and we'll again drag this anchor point move tool, and we'll move our anchor point to the center, and then if we align, we can align this straight back in the center, and we'll grab a fill effect again, drop this on the text, grab this color from the back, uh, uh, and then create a new solid, plain white, and drop it in between these two layers here. So that's going to be the look that we get. And what we're going to do with this red solid in the background is we're going to again grab that wireframe drag it in there and we're gonna set the white solid to use the alpha inverted mat of the uh, wireframe as a mat for it and we'll actually do a fill effect because we're gonna change the color of this red here a little bit 
uh, we just wanted a nice starting point. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag it quite a bit closer to white so that it'll be pretty close to kind of white or very light gray, but just still have a little bit of that red tone that we like. And we want it to just kind of poke out of the background so that we can keep our title in the middle stationary, but still have some movement to this middle title and make it a little dynamic in its own sense. So yeah, I think that'll do the trick. And so now we have our three titles all set up and ready to go. Title 3, Title 2, Title 1, and if we come back into the render comp, what we'll do now is just kind of animate these together. Uh, so it should be a fairly simple process, uh, but let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, we'll make a copy of the second title, and we're going to zoom in here a little bit so we can get a little more room to work. And the copy that's on the bottom will drag out a little bit. Okay, looks nice. And let's see. We're at exactly three seconds here at the point where it cuts from Title One to Title Two. So we'll go back about half a second. Maybe a little less. Yeah, half a second will work. And what we'll do is we'll come to the scale, keyframe it, and scale it down 100%. And for all these layers, we'll turn on motion blur. Turn on motion blur for the comp so that as they do things, we'll get some nice motion blur that will kind of help us composite these together. So this will be how it animates from title one to title two. Uh, it's just kind of a scale down. Uh, well, actually, since this is flat, let's do something a little different from what we did in the original. Uh, if we hit the scale here again, what we'll do is at this final keyframe, we'll unlock the scale and we'll set the X scale to 100%. So what will happen is it will just kind of scale down flat. And now we need to go from title th two to title three. Okay. And so let's come right to the point when they, s when it switches titles and then go back about half a second. And let's see, we'll hit, and on this second title, we'll hit S, and then hold down Shift and hit P, and then sh hit R. And what we want to do is keyframe all of these controls, and then come to the very last frame, right beforehand. And where is the preview? Go back one frame. And we want to zoom in quite a bit here. And we'll also rotate, not too much, maybe about 10 or 15 degrees, uh, just a little bit of rotation. And then scale up. And that should probably do the trick. So if we go by back frame by frame, we can watch this kind of do its thing. And then we don't actually want for the red to fill the entire frame uh, on the very last frame of the composition here because what we'll do is this will start to kind of fill the frame and it'll get really close, but then when we cut to the actual first frame of the third title, it will appear as if that is the last frame has finished it off and we don't have a repeat frame or anything and we're ready to go. Uh, but that should have it all animated and ready to go. Let's go ahead and take a look at this new design. Uh, yeah, looks dope. Uh, so thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, feel free to check out a uh, lot, a whole host more of uh, motion graphics tutorials at motionmile.com. Uh, but I'm Mackenzie Criswell, and uh, I'll see you next time.